don't often care about things that they don't have a personal experience with. You know, we wouldn't like baseball as much if we couldn't go to a bunch of baseball games, right? So my feeling was that uh, most, very few people have a chance to um, get really close to Birds of Prey, and especially if you just go to an educational talk. Um, you're not going to be able to handle the bird. So, and I also think it's the opportunity to get totally present with everything, you know, because you have to be present to interact with these birds. You have to be aware of them. You will see mainly three of these orders. You ever heard of scientific orders where they, where they classify according to DNA? Egg, yes, that's what we're talking about. Good gracious. <laughs> I love it. The very first bird ended up being an eagle that I eventually purchased. Um, it was an eagle that had cataracts, and so it was a good bird for me to start with. Um, because he didn't move around a lot or bait a lot or anything, and that was my first experience manning a bird, and it just happened to be a bachelor eagle, which was really neat. Early in my life, after college, I was an investment banker. I then realized that I'd always had a passion for music and loved singing. So I moved down to Nashville to be a songwriter and an artist. I was watching Birds of Prey on webcams on the computer. I was watching pairs of eagles in the wild and, uh, and peregrine falcons, etc. And I just got really inspired by these creatures that were, you know, represented freedom, strength, endurance, wisdom, um, just all kinds of exceptional powers of sense. So, um, and I just happened to be watching these um, eagles. At one point, um, the female on one of the nests that I was watching was killed and the Wildlife Center of Virginia had to go and take the eaglets out of the nest and rehabilitate them, well basically actually raise them in seclusion and then release them to the wild. So I just thought I was really envious of these people who could actually handle the eagles and, and feed them and rear them and, and I'd also always been interested in being per perhaps a vet tech or something like that. So. I went and took a falconry course, and that's when I just never stopped, basically. When you have a bird of prey, you can't just leave it to somebody else to take care of. You have to think about that bird every single day. You have to protect that bird. You have to make sure its feathers are protected, make sure its um, aviary is clean, make sure it has water. It's so much more work than a dog. I mean, I have like 14 birds, so I, it's not easy for me to travel. Um, it, it occupies most of my time. And of course, it's my way of earning my living at this point. Um, and I and I love it. You know, it's re, it's also my spiritual practice. It's 
what makes me happy. I just love to go out and pressure wash the aviary and replace the water and interact with them and it just keeps me in the present moment, connected to nature, you know, outside. Moonbeam. She's 25% peregrine falcon and she's 25% Barbary falcon. So she has three different types of falcon in her. And the reason for that is she is bred specifically to hunt duck. It's that breeding, it's the attributes, it's the, it's the strength of the gerfalcon, the bulk, the wing load, it's the aggression and speed of the peregrine, and it's the tenacity of the Barbary falcon, and you get your perfect duck hawk. But I also want people to get the spiritual experience, the spiritual element of being up close and personal and able to be in the same space as a creature that to me has really um, high healing frequencies to it. Nature is, birds are, we are. That's all, it's that simple. Um, without understanding that we are nothing but nature, you know, we are not our bodies, we are not our minds even, we are not our brains, we are spirit, we are energy. And nature is a force that is much stronger than we are. And when we realize that and we're humble about it, um, I think we feel bigger, not smaller. You know, we don't feel bound by our bodies. You should, we are not, you are not bound by your body. Your, your soul is a part of everything. And that's what nature is. When I'm doing the experiences, I just feel that it makes people happy, and that makes me happy. You know, it makes me feel better to give people an experience that they'll remember for the rest of their lives because it's so unique and so special. All right, superpower number three. What is that? So we've got flying. We've got eyesight. We already went over wingspan. That's number four. No, that's actually, that is for the owl, but the others don't have exceptional hearing. Speed! You said that, right? Jeez, she got one over on you. Okay, exactly right. What's the fastest living creature on the whole planet? Yay! Okay. How fast can they go? They can stoop at 240 miles an hour. Exactly right. It just makes me happier. It keeps me in the present moment. Um, it brings me closer to spirit, you know. Um, I believe that underneath all this stuff that you see, the world, um, the manifest world, that there is a one, there's one thing. It's just pure consciousness that doesn't have a brain and go, oh, I am consciousness. It just is, you know? And there's only one thing here and then everything comes out of that and returns to it. And so it keeps me in that. It's almost like a constant meditation. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the most important question of all. Uh oh. Who's your favorite bird? <laughs> oh no, don't do that to me. I, I can't say because 
I mean, I love each of them for different reasons. 